Um, oh, that's yeah. strange. Well, we've had a couple couple folks drop Yeah, a couple folks dropped off. CJ in Raleigh, North Carolina, you wanted to ask a question, potentially, I guess, about the debate I'm doing tomorrow? Yeah, that's pretty much what I was wanting to ask. Um, Got to admit, I'm kind of nervous right now, um, but... So, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I was wanting to know, uh, generally, uh, what do you think about, uh, David Wood as a, do you consider him to be like a heavy contender or pretty much the same, or just was one to know, uh, what do you feel about, uh, debating him? Um, okay. So tomorrow, um, around three o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon or so, I'll be here in the studio doing another one of the modern day debate series and I'll be debating uh, David Wood. Um, I've watched him one time when uh, Murphy and I went to Oklahoma to for Murphy to debate him. Um, what are you debating about? Which is a better foundation for ethics, God or secular humanism? Oh, good question. Yeah, it's actually a shit question, which oh, is what I... Uh, but, uh, but uh, no, no, no. Tell me I mean, why. What, what we think the question is, is good and something that's worth discussing. Uh, the particular phrasing of doing God versus secular humanism uh, is a big problem, which I'll address. I don't want to talk about my thoughts about David specifically because I don't know the guy that well. I know that... I know his backstory. I know that he is a diagnosed psychopath, Um who, who, it doesn't surprise me that he believes in the Bible. Well, at the time when he tried to, I think it was, tried to kill his father with a hammer or, or something like that and oh, ended boy. up in jail. But it was in jail that somebody basically, uh, you know, introduced him to uh, the story of Jesus in that foundation. And that fundamentally turned his life around. But he's, it's not like it cured his psychopathy. He's still, you know, in the same thing. Now, we're going to be having a discussion about morality. Um I don't care. So the question that was asked was, is he a heavy contender apologist? Well, no. I mean, just in the sense that I don't think he's as well known as some other apologists. But that doesn't matter to me. I, I'm interested in having discussions and with people who may present different views, if for no other reason than at some point all of these apologists who have you know, showed up and tried to debate, maybe they'll get together in a room and figure out which one of them is actually right uh, and then, you know, come as a group to say, we are now in agreement on this point, and here's why we think you're wrong, because right now I'm getting different answers from different people. But when I prep for a debate, I don't prep for the person, because the person is irrelevant. I prep for the question or the subject of the debate. And if I instead prepare for a person, now all of a sudden uh, I run the risk of more ad hominems or... I run the risk of preparing for a position that maybe that's not what they're going to present. Debates take place in that time. It's one of the reasons why I am I work the way I do. I don't know what's coming through on the phone on the show. I mean, I, yeah, there's a call screener thing that kind of says a little bit, but I don't know what a caller is going to say. And so being able to respond on the fly is a skill to have. So in the same way that I don't, I mean, I, I, don't, you got to be careful with raising. I'd say I don't care who's on the phone. Who, the person that I'm speaking to on the phone is irrelevant to the argument that they're making and the evidence that they're presenting. And the same thing's true in a debate, whether it's David or Matt Slick or Mike Lacona or William Lane Craig. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that, I guess that um, gives me what is, uh, what's uh, going to happen. Um, I mean, I'm aware that you yourself have said that, uh, you know, you like to be um, anonymous or like to not know as little about your opponent. So that way, like, I guess, was it so like the conversation could um, carry on uh, as it went or yeah. something like that? Yeah, don't get me wrong. If if there's a, like, if, if I was debating William and Lynn Craig, of course I'm going to, well, actually, I don't have to go back because I already know how to do that. But you, you present a new debate opponent and they've done a lot of debates. I will probably go back and listen to some of what they've done to see if they come up with some of the same arguments because it would be silly to not be prepared for a specific argument that they give every time. Like Craig is almost always going to give either the Kalam cosmological argument or some version of the moral argument if the subject is, is there a God? But I was in New York City to have a discussion with Dinesh D'Souza. That's now available online. It was supposed to be about God, Trump, and the future of America. Um, I did not go back through and watch a lot of Dinesh's stuff, I've probably spent 
two or three minutes actually looking up stuff about him and what he had said because if I walk in with all of this baggage, then it becomes, here, let me show up with a list of quotes of, of shitty things that Dinesh has said. Hey, when you said this, do you still hold to that? Do you think? And now all of a sudden it's like an interview where you're just trying to expose that this person is bad when I'd rather have a conversation about ideas. So the discussion that we had didn't really focus on God, Trump, and the future of America, which is what it was supposed to, because we started with God and that got derailed into epistemology, which veered off into climate change, um, trans issues, and healthcare is kind of where we went. I mean, Trump barely got mentioned. And the key point, which I got to, is what you're seeing is a secular humanist who's focused on policies and principles that affect human beings against a neocon who every time I, or almost every time I ask him a question, uh, he goes to what the markets are doing or how people are spending their money or this stuff. That is a completely separate focus. Like, I'm happy to be broke for the rest of my life as long as I'm doing good and I'm doing good. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, what you, like what you said uh, about with, um, in general, uh, with the debates, I think a lot of the times many of the people who debate William Lane Craig, at least when I've seen, like, Sam Harris and Robert M. Price, like, when you see, like, their first openings, they can pretty much, are you can tell that they're determined to just eviscerate the dude instead of, you know, they don't care about necessarily how the debate goes. Right. They just want to eviscerate the dude because of his tap dancing, necessarily. Yeah, and, and I didn't want to walk into de to the debate or discussion with Dinesh. Um, it, it's clear. Once upon a time, he and I agreed on stuff. I changed my mind um, about many, 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 many things. And he's still holding to those things, and I would rather have a discussion about that. And I was able to expose um, how awful he was on, on trans issues, um, which actually got me an email from a woman in the UK who thinks I'm really wrong about trans issues. And she's fully supportive of men being able to dress up or even have surgery and all that stuff, but they're still men. And they're now poisoning women's issues and women's rights issues. And I, I went back and forth really quickly and it was like, you know, she's like, I'm just tired of people calling me a turf. And I was like, well, if you're a feminist, then you're a turf. T-R-E-F, T-E-R-F, trans exclusionary radical feminist. Um, but if you're not a feminist, then you're not a turf. You're just a fucking bigot. <laughs> yeah. Well, in general, I mean, I, I feel like, like, let's say, like, for example, uh, like the reason another thing about David Wood, uh, with him being a psychopath, uh, defending the Christian God, uh, do you think if he was an idiot, he'd be more likely to defend something like, uh, um, what kind of God do you think he would defend necessarily if he was necessarily a complete idiot as opposed to a psychopath? I, I don't know remotely how to answer that because... I don't know that the two are mutually exclusive. I don't know what it means to be a complete like, idiot. But also, you believe in whatever you believe in. So rather than setting up a fictional David Wood for me to knock over on the show, why don't we just do the thing tomorrow and talk over what David's position is and address the position and not the person or some fictional version of the it. person. I, I was strawmanned enough in New York with Dinesh that I, I don't have any interest in strawmanning somebody else. Yeah. But on that note, CJ, we're going to get some more calls. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. And yeah, it's going to be well, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, not to s spoiler ruin everything, but I tried to have it be which is a better foundation for morality, Christianity or secular humanism. And when I suggested that topic as opposed to God, because originally he wanted God versus atheism, mm -hmm. and I was like, neither of those things have are. Our ethical positions. systems, they don't have positions on this. Um, so let's, let's do Christianity versus secular humanism because now at least you're talking about two worldviews that are supposed to be about this. Mm -hmm. But his thing was if we changed it to Christianity, he'd need an, an extra two weeks to prepare. Now, <laughs> while I just said I'm, confused. I'm more <laughs> interested in the topic and the discussion than I am the person, that's an embarrassing load of crap. Because if you're not coming in to defend the Christian worldview and just God, you have already lost. And my opening statement in the debate will make this crystal clear that there is zero way that David can ever win this debate. It can't ever be more than 
I assert that God is the best foundation for morality because you have no access to that. But why on earth would it take you two extra weeks to prepare to defend what you actually fucking believe? You're supposed to be a Christian apologist. You're supposed to be a defender of the faith. You are required under 1 Peter 3.15 to be prepared at all times, not in two weeks. Be prepared in two weeks to give the... Ju- it, it's, <clears throat> it's bizarre to me, but that's what he wants to defend. And maybe it's the one shot that he'll get to you know, to debate at this level because, quite frankly, this debate is over before it starts, Mm. which sucks because there's a real discussion to be had here about ethics. And also, we got into it about format because I wanted, you know, hey, here's a couple 15 minutes openings and then an hour of discussion and then Q&A. He wanted two 12-minute openings, two eight-minute first rebuttals, two five-minute second oh, rebuttals, very, very huh? then closing arguments, or then some discussion, then closing arguments, and then um, uh, questions and answers. And I'm like, why would you do closings before question and answers? What if something comes up there that you want to expand? You know, why do I need two rebuttals? Hmm. Can't we just work that all into a discussion where we're asking each other questions? And don't you get more by saying... In your opening, when you said this, what exactly did you mean? And do I understand this? Or how is this not this way? Mm -hmm. But this, I'm going to make an opening statement. You're going to make an opening statement. Then I'm going to rebut your opening statement. Then you're going to rebut my opening statement. Then I'm going to re-rebut your opening statement. Then you're going to re-rebut my... I'm not here to earn points. This is not collegiate debate. I don't care about structured formats. That is... The structure, the script of both the debate and what you're going to say is what's going to make you end up, David, looking foolish because you pe- stuck with a particular topic and you stuck with a strict format. And that's, that's not just me shit-talking. That's me actually caring about having good discussions because I'm not convinced that this struct- strict format and, and particular topic is actually going to get there. As a reminder...